Welcome back guys. We have an electrical problem on this car and so we're going to do a little diagnosis and we'll do a little repair, whatever it turns out to be. I don't know what's wrong with it. I haven't looked at it. Uh, the story is, and by the way this is a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta. It's got a 2.8 liter engine on it. Uh, the wife called me at work. She said she got in it to crank it up uh, so she could go to work and she turned it to start and it didn't do anything. No clicks, no nothing. She turned it off, tried it again, went to start, and the next thing she said, uh, smoke, white smoke was coming up out of the steering column right up in here. So I have not seen it. I have uh, My guess is that there's a problem with the ignition switch, probably harness connector that plugs up to the, uh, you know, to the ignition switch. I don't know that for sure. We're going to do a little diagnosis to see if we can start pulling the covers off and take a little uh, more look at this thing. So <clears throat> first thing we want to do is let's uh, let's just show you the symptoms. Let me show you what it's going to do here. All right, let's get the key and let's stick it in. Let me mash the clutch. It's going on. Turn it to start. Nothing presently I don't see any smoke. Okay. One more time. Nothing. All right. All right. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, maybe there's a dead battery. It's really low. I don't think so. But just, you know, we don't want to make any guesses here when we're doing some diagnosis. So we'll do that. All right. So we're going to check the battery voltage here. So let me just come right over here. And we'll take a look at it and see what the open circuit voltage is. And we've got, looks like 12.6 volts, all right? So, now what we can do is we can go over there and we can turn the starter, you know, try to start it, and then we'll watch this here battery voltage and see if it drops. Now, if it does drop, say, oh, one or two volts, then we know that the starter is getting some current, and we can't hear the audible click. Well, my guess is we're not going to see very much drop here, maybe... 100 millivolts, 200 millivolts, or maybe a little more depending on all these other accessories that's going to be turning on, you know, there's going to be the fuel pump's going to start for a little bit, and then you're going to have solenoids clicking and going on, relays, and all this other stuff. So let's see if we got any kind of significant voltage drop coming off of this battery here. So we'll do that. So I'm going to get the wife in there, and I'm going to have her to do a crank, put it in the start position, see if she can crank it. Of course, we know it won't, and then we'll just watch the voltage drop here on the battery, okay? Okay, go ahead and give it a crank. Alright, so it dropped down to what, 12.2 maybe, 12.3? Okay, let's give it a half a volt. Alright, so we know the starter is not pulling any current, so that's telling us that we have a control problem where the control circuit is not working to get the 12 volts down to the starter. So let's go and look at the diagrams now. All right, here is our, here's our starting system. Here's a wiring diagram for it. And it doesn't look that much to it. It's fairly simple looking here. All right, let's go over a little bit for the, for the newcomers out there. We have a battery. Battery has a positive, has a negative terminal. All right, you see the negative terminal is grounded. Now what we're gonna do is we're coming out with a positive 12 volts. It's going to go through this fuse. It's 110 amp. Let me show you where that's at. Although we know that's not our problem, let me just show you just for reference. Now here's a 110 amp fuse. It's this one right here. Okay. And you can look at it. It's just a uh, fusible link. Okay. You can see that it's good. There's nothing wrong with that. And if that did blow, you would have more, uh, there will be more problems than just having a problem with the starting system because it's uh, actually feeding other things here. As you can see, it's coming through and it's going to be feeding, you know, uh, fuel pump relay. You can hear all of that stuff that's not going to be working either. But anyway, visual look, we see it's fine, so we're going to move on to the next thing. All right, so after continuing on, after we go through the fuse, we're going to continue up. This is a red wire. It's going up, going up, going up. And you can see that it's going into a little dash box here. Well, this dash box here is telling us it says 13 position auxiliary relay panel located under the left side of the dash. Well, I can tell you from the past, this thing 
is very, very tough to get to as far as this here, this here uh, relay center here. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so we're going to go through, coming on down, and as we come down, we're going to go to the ignition switch. Now, the dash line means, of course, that we're not seeing everything that's inside that ignition switch. This is only pertinent to what we're looking at right now, which is the starting system. Now, when I turn the switch to the start position, this here arrow is going to move and go to go over to this position here. This dot up here is a common. Think of that as your pivot point. This here arrow is just swinging back and forth, right? Every time you go to start, this will swing over. Now, when it swings over, when you go to start, it'll come over. Now we're going to go out, 12 volts comes down, go to splice. Now we can see the 12 volts is feeding the fuel pump relay, which we're not concerned with. We're going to come on down to here. We can see that it's feeding this here component here, right? By the way, you see how this line right here, this box right there is solid? That means we're looking at everything that's inside this here component, okay? Now, over here, you can see that the 12 volts continues on, goes over, and it goes to the clutch pedal position switch, which is located above the clutch pedal. Now that looks to me like that might be a little more accessible than trying to get directly over here to the switch. Of course, it's all covered up and everything. So we could probably get to this right here. So here's my thought. If we can get to right here, we can put a voltmeter there, then we can go to the start position, then we can see if our 12 volts is there. Now, if we don't have 12 volts there, then we know that more than likely that our problem is inside this ignition switch. All right, and if we get 12 volts there, then we could say, well, it could be the, the, the switch here. So all, all we have to do is come on this side, press the cl clutch pedal, and see if we have the 12 volts. And if we have it there, then that means more than likely we're going to have it here. And then our problem is going to be up in this joker, and look where he's located at, 13-fold auxiliary relay panel, same as where this, uh, where this little junction up here is, where this here... B plus, the 12 volts is getting tied together. It's a, it's, a, it's a bear. First thing I'm thinking about, let's get to this here clutch pedal switch. Let's see if we got 12 volts here when we put this here switch into the start position. And uh, just to carry it on a little bit further, uh, this here this here box right here, you notice that inside? Well, that's it doesn't show you. It doesn't tell you anything what it is. But what it is is electronics. There's electronics in there that's going to put a low signal out. DC negative volts going to come out here to this here relay coil. Now here's a contact for the relay coil. Now how do you know this is a negative? Well, look down here. If we follow this all the way down on this side of the coil, and we come on down, well, we can see, well, is that positive or negative? I don't know, but kind of look on, keep on looking. Now you can see that there's a DC negative, right? And you follow it up, DC negative is on this side of the solenoid coils. One's a pull-in coil, one is the hold-in coil. We don't, we're not going to go into all the detail about that. We'll save that for another video if you like. But anyway, you can see this is the DC negative. That means this is the positive. I slide up. That means this is the positive side of this coil. I go to this side. That means this side has to be negative. So basically, what will happen is that when this here clutch pedal is pushed, this here is going to close. Remember, there's the pivot. There's the arrow. It's going to go back like this. So then the 12 volts is going to come down. As soon as this here gets 12 volts on this electronics, the electronics is going to put a low here. That's going to energize this here relay coil. Then the magnetic field is going to take this contact, close it. Then it's going to allow the 12 volts to come right on down to the starter motor. And then good things are going to happen. Then we'll hear an engine crank. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is let's go up to this clutch pedal, like I mentioned. Let's check our 12 volts, see if it's there. All right, guys. Well, on the driver's side, I'm up under the dash, and we're looking at that relay center uh, that we was that we talked about a little bit earlier. Now, what you can see right here is a fuse, right? And then you can see there's another fuse. Then there's this 
there's uh, this here relay center box or whatever that is. There's another relay. There's another relay. Okay, that don't look too bad, right? But you got to remember that this relay center is three rows deep. So we're only looking at the bottom row, and there's two more rows up above it. So if you have to get up in there to work on something in that uh, one of these other two rows, you are pretty much done. I mean, you could get your... It is hard to even get your hand up in there. Now you say, well... You want to drop the whole thing down well you can do that i guess but the problem with that i see is there's a bolt over here this right in there behind where my finger is sorry if you can't see that and then there's another one on the other side which is right there well okay take those two uh nuts out slide it off the studs and you can drop it down well it looks like from what i've seen this wiring in here is not that long so you're not going to get it down that far to actually work on it from what I can see. So, uh, just want, I just hope you don't have any problems going on with that joker. Because that looks like that is going to be a bear. Okay, now you saw that relay center up there. But uh, let me show you the diagram. Then you can get a better picture of uh, what's going on here. Do you remember we saw, we looked at the bottom row there? That's it right here. And it shows right here, it's like two separate uh, relays. But it, did you know that was one big white module? And I'm not sure what that is. It says five and six not used, but obviously there is something in there. So the documentation sometimes don't tell you the truth. And you remember I was uh, telling you it was three rows? Well, there's the one, there's two rows, and there's three. This up here at the very top is at the very top. All right? So if you got to get up in here, you I pray for you. All right? And, uh, and right here... If the, remember the starter lockout relay that we were talking about earlier? This joker right here. If it turns out, let's say that you got 12 volts there, then you can press your clutch and just see if you got 12 volts so you can ohm it or whatever you want to do. And if you see you got 12 volts there, that you know what that means? You're going to have to start getting up in here to this starter locking relay. Mm. Now, let me show you where that joker is located at. All right, we come down here. We slide down. Number three, starter locking relay. All right, clutch pedal switch. It's located up here, 13 fold auxiliary, auxiliary relay panel. All right, well, the auxiliary relay panel is right up here. That's those top two rows. Number three, there you are. All right, I hope you don't have to go up in there. I really do. All right, so uh, anyway, I just want to show you that, so just in case. Your problem came out to be something else, uh, then then you'll know where you're located at. All right. And by the way, this bottom row down here, they call that the relay panel, but I call the whole thing just the relay relay center. All right. And they call this up here a 13 fold auxiliary relay panel because you have 13 slots or connection points you can make up for, you know, relays. All right. So let me get you to the. Uh, let me show you the clutch pedal switch here if I can all right do you see that white uh, right there right there that's a clutch pedal switch and you can see that it is buried up in there too so it doesn't really make it nice and easy to try to get up in there to try to get something uh, get a voltmeter or TPN or something so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop the whole assembly down here and try to get it a little bit more accessible so what you want to do is get your hands on there, get one hand, get one hand on that uh, white assembly, that switch, turn it counterclockwise, and then pull it straight back. And I, I don't know if I can do that myself. Maybe I can do it so you guys can see. Yeah, I think I told you the wrong thing when I said the white. It's actually right behind this uh, other white that you're seeing right now. So. If I get it dropped, you can see it. Uh, uh, all right. How many guys out there loves Volkswagens? <laughs> all right. For all you guys that loves Volkswagens, I can tell you right now, you don't work on them. Uh, all right. See, there's this. This is uh, there's that switch. Okay. So uh, let's take and yeah, there's a wires up there. So we got a looks like a red with a gray and a, maybe a gray with a yellow. So let's take a look at the diagram. Let's get a little closer look at that. All right, let's see where we at. There's our clutch pedal switch. 
And let's see, as you remember, this is our 12 volts coming around, coming around, going up. So, I want to be on the red wire with the gray tracer. So when I turn that switch to the start position, I should have 12 volts. So let's see if we do. All right, guys, I got my, got my voltmeter. I got my ground hooked up to the metal bracket of that relay center. Since I like that thing so much, I figured it's got a really great ground on it since I see metal bracket wrapped around it. All right, so my lead is there for my black lead. For the, all right, so what I want to ensure is that I do have a good source of voltage. This will confirm that my ground is good. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to get on one of these studs with these big red wires. That tells me that's probably some good 12 volts there. So I'm going to check, and I do mm -hmm. have it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my alligator clip. I'm going to hook on my red lead. I got a T-pin plugged into that red wire that we talked about with the gray tracer. All right. Now he's hooked up. All right. So now I'm going to get the key. Where's the key already in there? All right, I'm going to get the key, turn it to the start position, and we should have 12 volts down there if everything is good from the ignition switch. Oh, my. You know what this means. Mm. means that we got to go and now look at the ignition switch and maybe the connector that's plugged to it and see what's going on. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap this video up, and this was just going to be one for the diagnosis just to say where we needed to go. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one when we start taking off these covers and looking around and poking and seeing what we can find in there around the ignition switch. You guys take care.